Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello, and welcome to Outreach Connection. My name is Sherry McDaniel, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the program today. You know, in just the very short time that I've been a part of this team here at Outreach Connection, I have been amazed at how God reaches across all kinds of worldly boundaries to connect people to His love. And just as Jesus tells us to do in 1 John 3.18 when He says, Let us not love with words and speech, but with actions and in truth. And so that's what we're all about, just sharing the love of God. And each week we bring to you testimonies and stories about folks who are just out there with the love of God in their hearts and wanting to do that very same thing. Today we have someone with us, a very special guest who is just living his life doing that very thing, giving his life to God and allowing him to uh, connect him in places that he never saw himself being to connect people to the love of God. Pastor Kevin Coates, welcome to Outreach Connect. Thank you. What an honor to be here. Thank oh, you. It is exciting to have you. Now, we have a lot that we want to talk about. Sure. And we've been talking before we even got on the camera. A pretty exciting story, what God is doing in your life. But let's start by just having the folks at home get to know you a little bit. Share with us a little bit about you and your family. Well, I am. I currently live in Hannibal, Missouri, uh, where I work full-time in law enforcement. And uh, just to take a few steps back, how I was brought into the Lord, as I, um, as I shared with you before, I was born in, in mm -hmm. this uh, lifestyle. Yeah. My grandfather uh, came, into the, um, uh, came to the Lord back in the early, probably the 30s into early 40s, right about in that area, after my grandmother had gotten saved in an old-fashioned uh, Pentecostal tent revival <laughs> over in Greene County, Illinois, which is where I'm from, a little mm -hmm. town called Whitehall mm -hmm. that maybe some would be familiar with. And... Um, so after my grandmother's conversion, my grandpa then showed up one night uh, with what I've been told with the intention of <laughs> disrupting the service. And I think what ended up happening was God disrupted him oh, and disrupted yeah. his life. And God called him into the ministry. And he pastored for many years uh, back home in the uh, Root House, Illinois area. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my father was called into the ministry. And the Lord uh, uh, called him into the ministry after he returned home from Vietnam. So I'm a third generation into this, and as I was sharing with you earlier, I didn't have any intention <laughs> in anything ministry related. And there was a time, oh, probably about 20 years ago now, we're getting close to about 20 years, where I felt the Lord tugging at my heart to do some ministry. And I told the Lord, I'll never forget it, I told Him, if you want three generations of ministry, go to my brother or go to my sister, <laughs> not me. And um, after a short time of not walking with the Lord, my heart got cold. I, you know, didn't go out and get in criminal trouble or do drugs, nothing like that. But uh, it was a heart condition, mm -hmm. which is where, you know, the church needs to focus today. Uh, Jesus Amen. said in Matthew, excuse me, Mark 7, some honor me with their mouth, but their hearts mm -hmm. are far from me. Mm -hmm. And my heart had gotten cold. So after uh, the death of my grandmother in 2001, um, I got tired of running. And it, it was actually at her funeral, in a funeral home in Whitehall, Illinois, that uh, sitting on the second row of the chairs, I said, Lord, I'm tired of running. I will do what you want. I will give my life back to you. Um, and it's been an exciting journey ever since. Wow. And later, just a few months after that then, I got a call from a best friend of mine who said, um, we were just over in the Hannibal area, and we met a, a young girl who goes to Hannibal LaGrange, a student over there, and we <laughs> need to set you up on a blind date with her. And uh, that blind date led into uh, 15 years of marriage and two children and a career. And uh, God has really blessed our family. I have a little uh, son, seven-year-old Elijah, and a, a little girl, uh, three-year-old Abigail. Wow. And uh, they, they are very high-spirited nonetheless. <laughs> but and they um, keep us young, don't they? They do, they yeah. do. But uh, I thank God for my family because the family is the backbone of an individual, and individuals are the backbone of the church. And in order mm -hmm. to strengthen the church, we got to strengthen the families. Amen. And uh, fast forward to about 2006, I felt the Lord dealing with my heart again about ministry. Mm -hmm. And this time I told Him, yes, Lord, I, I will do whatever you want. I will take whatever door you open. Mm -hmm. Go wherever you want, 
but it's got to be by you. I've got to have your hand over it because I can't do it on my own. And mm -hmm. it's been an exciting decade plus now. Amen. Well, you had shared with me that God has brought you into an itinerant uh, ministry. Yes. And tell us a little bit about that. So when I felt the call to ministry, I felt led in the area of teaching the Word of God, which mm -hmm. I'm uh, very, you know, big on. And I also felt his leading into itinerant speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's the majority of my ministry right now, which has led into a lot of times if a church will be in between pastors, mm -hmm. um, I've gotten a call to uh, step in and kind of fill the pulpit while mm -hmm. they're in their transition, mm -hmm. which I'm currently doing right now at uh, Saverton Community Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're having a good season right now with that. And a couple years ago, I was uh, extended an offer to do the same at Camp Point Assembly of God, mm -hmm. and uh, wow, mm -hmm. just had a phenomenal season uh, mm -hmm. there for the time that we were there, and great people. Uh, many are still close friends of but ours you today. you met someone special there, did you? I did. Uh, I did. Yeah. I met a gentleman by the name of Ted Lung, mm -hmm. uh, who has now become one of my closest friends. Yeah. And um, I had, and I shared this with you, I had told the Lord previously that uh, I had no interest in foreign missions. <laughs> I was fine here in the U.S., you know, and I, I just didn't have any desire to uh, travel outside the U.S. But the Lord um, sent a man uh, my way by the name of uh, Pastor Corey Allen of New London that Consume Ministries, and mm -hmm. he has a mission to Central America. And he said, hey, he, he uh, was over at my house one night, and he said, hey, we're uh, going down to El Salvador, and we're going to minister to the police. Would you like to come? And I thought, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> However, after some prayer and, uh, you know, listening to the voice of the Lord, I, yes. I, as I shared with you, I said yes. And uh, that led into some missionary trips in El Salvador. But um, where uh, my friend Ted Lung came in was, uh, it was my last Sunday at Camp Point uh, before they installed their new pastor. Okay. And he said, hey, he said, I go to the nation of Haiti a lot. Will you go? Would you consider going? And just out of my <laughs> mouth immediately without consulting my wife or anything, I said, when are we going? Amen. And that has now led into three trips and um, with Ted, and we will be returning uh, probably in a few months back down there. Uh, and God is continuing to open doors, and uh, wow, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm it's just a wow thankful. thing, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it really is. And it it's really very is. humbling. Absolutely. You know, we talked a little bit about, we just, somehow we seem to think that, what could I offer to yeah. the kingdom of God? But God just says, just just give me what you have. Absolutely. And, you know, I can move a mountain with that. Amen. And literally that has been your mission. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your trip to El Salvador. When I saw on the web page mm -hmm. the photos and, and the testimonies, I was it just really touched my heart. Because God took you from where you're familiar in law enforcement. Yes. And He used that. And He was able to connect you all the way to he El was. Salvador. So share with us about that ministry. So Pastor that. Corey, of course, he asked me to uh, come down and he said, man, we're speaking to the police. And he said, I can't think of anybody better <laughs> than a police officer to take with me. And so I went down with him and uh, the first meeting we met with approximately 60 street level officers in the uh, Santa Ana, El Salvador area. Mm -hmm. And on the way down, I told, um, I told my friend Corey, I said, hey, I said, um, in prayer, I feel that there's going to be a gentleman show up, a police officer show up. And he's going to be standing at a certain part of the building we're going to be meeting at. And I said, the Lord's um, really going to minister to him and touch him today. And the man showed up in which you saw his picture on yes. our website. Yeah. Uh, he was the highest ranking commander in the Santa Ana precinct. And uh, he had just been involved in a friendly fire uh, oh. near miss, which almost claimed his life. And uh, when he showed up at the meeting, I was getting ready to speak. And he asked if he could have the microphone for a second. And of course, I yielded to him and he said, I don't know why I'm here. But he said, something told me to come here today. And after he shared what happened with his um, near miss, I took the mic back and I said, Sir, I will tell you why you're here today. It's the voice of the Holy Ghost in your heart that drew you. Mm -hmm. And we laid hands mm -hmm. on him and prayed for him and just had a wonderful service that first trip. And, and isn't, uh, what an opportunity, Kevin, to, yeah. to pray with and lay hands on brothers in law enforcement That's right. who are in such a struggle and, and, they are. and most of the time in minority uh, positions. Um, you know, minority in the number I'm yes. talking um, to 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 keep peace in the world. Absolutely. But now they're bringing to that 
the love of God. That's and right. so you were able to share with them and join with them in prayer and minister to them and, and help to empower them with the Word That's and right. how that can help them to go out and minister in their everyday lives. Right. So what an opportunity. So that led you to a second trip there. A follow-up trip then in 2015. Uh, this time uh, when we went down, they had us in a private resort up in uh, the mountains of northern El Salvador. And this time when, I, uh, when we showed up, I looked out in the uh, audience there and there were about 60 to 70 nationally ranked commanders there this time. Yeah. And uh, so they had heard about our meetings in Santa Ana and they hosted us at a, it was a beautiful resort in a coffee plantation, just a beautiful part of the country. And we, uh, I was able to share the word with them and encourage them and, and um, you know, I was addressing law enforcement leadership mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. And I really challenge them leadership wise uh, with, you know, taking command, number one, spiritually with the Word of God Amen. and setting that example for their officers. And uh, we just had a fantastic meeting. Wow. We really did a great trip. So, And you know, from that one, God says, be faithful in the little things and I will make you ruler over much. So That's right. from that one choice, that one, what you thought was a small decision, That's right. you know, I'll, yes, I'll go. Um, mm -hmm. God took you to some of the highest leaders in, in law enforcement to share with them and, and that you could share the love of God at the, at, and the, the measure of the word that God had given you. And, and like you said, to challenge them in their daily walk to lead and encourage others yes. in the love of Christ. Yeah. What an awesome, what an awesome testimony. Yeah. So from there, then God takes you to Haiti. He did, he did. And uh, again, my connection when I was uh, serving as interim, uh, kind of fill in, uh, mm -hmm. fill in the pulpit for a Camp Point Assembly mm -hmm. of God. Uh, like I mentioned, I got real uh, close with a gentleman by the name of Ted Lung, who I'm sure is watching this program. Uh -huh. And um, you know, that's when he gave me uh -huh. the invitation to Haiti. And I, I was actually extremely excited about going to Haiti because I know that that's one of the most challenging places to evangelize. Yes. Yeah. It is, um, incredibly poor. Of course, it's one of the most poverty stricken nations mm -hmm. uh, really on the earth. Mm -hmm. And then they also deal with a lot of voodoo and a lot of witchcraft and black mm -hmm. magic in their culture. Mm -hmm. And so I was excited about going to Haiti. And what we do in our ministry there is we train up pastors, uh, church leaders, um, people that feel the call into church leadership or ministry and we hold seminars with them. And, um, and when I mean we hold seminars, I'm talking all day. Yeah. Uh, we will start at 9 a.m. and won't get done until 5 p.m. Wow. And it is all day. It and, is just uh, a filling, it a is. saturation, and, it and is. an affirmation probably for them of yeah. the callings on their life and how God wants to use them individually and an encouragement yes. to carry on absolutely in the environment that you described in a difficult place. And they need it. They need the training and the teaching. Um, and one of the things that I actually did not share with you that. Um, when we go to hold a seminar, many of the pastors come without a Bible. Some of oh. them do not even have a Bible. Yeah. Uh, that's how poverty stricken they are. So we have um, we've taken Bibles and uh, we've luckily found them printed in Creole. Mm -hmm. And we've taken Bibles yeah. and handed out to a lot of the deacons, uh, associate pastors, and even some senior pastors. And wow. um, they have really taken hold with that. And then the next time we return, we see them with their, uh, yes. their, those Bibles in hand. Yeah. And you know, Kevin, I've traveled to India and we also gave out Bibles there. Sure. And something that was so humbling to me is when you'd give them that Bible, they would kiss it yeah. and, and just embrace it yeah. because it was so precious to them. Right. And that's one of the things, part of your ministry, encouraging people to embrace the Word of God with Absolutely. such a passion, isn't it? Absolutely. It is. It is. Um, of course, along with missions trips, um, I'm uh, bivocational. Mm -hmm. So along with law enforcement, then when I'm not on the missionary field, that's <clears> when <throat> I travel around uh, to different churches around the mm -hmm. Quincy Hannibal area mm -hmm. predominantly. Mm -hmm. And I will be asked to speak maybe as a guest speaker or itinerant or excuse me, interim pastoral mm -hmm. work. And I really try to impress the principles of the Word of God Amen. into any congregation that I speak to. Mm -hmm. The one thing that will change a life is the Word of God. It Amen. is the absolute Word. Because Amen. without His Word, we don't have His wisdom. Amen. And without His wisdom, we're hopeless. 
Amen. You know, he says, my people perish for lack, lack of knowledge. Of knowledge. And that's what he's talking about. There's life in this word. That's right. So as, as people come into a relationship with Christ or even going into a church, encouraging them to be stirred. That's right. To get into the word and, and not just, you know, when our pastor came to our church, um, I was so amazed by the depth of his knowledge of the word. So a few times I would say, well, where's that at? And you know what he would do? He would say things like, well, go find it yourself. I agree. <laughs> I mean, he would challenge me. And you know, I had been in church my whole life, but I'd never been challenged to get into the word. And I guess it was because I thought, Hmm, is all of that word for me too. Right. So that's part of what God has you doing is just that encouragement and challenge. It is. And I want to impress the people watching today, 2 Corinthians 1.20, every promise in Him mm. is yes and amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if it's a salvation promise, a healing <laughs> promise, a restoration for the marriage, a financial promise. It didn't say the promises of God are partial. Yeah. It said that's every right. Promise Amen. in Him, and that's the key. You have to be in a covenant relationship with Him, mm -hmm. and when we're in covenant with Him, Galatians two twenty, I'm crucified with Him, so I don't live, but Christ lives in me, mm -hmm. because according to Scripture, I'm the dead man, proverb mm -hmm. uh, proverbially, mm -hmm. so to speak. And the important point to understand is, if I'm dead in Christ, then everything he earned on the cross, oh, I'm eligible is. for. Amen. I'm eligible for. Amen. Not because of my own works. I sure haven't earned it. Yeah. But because he is so loving, he earned it. And now he's extending it to you and I. And that's the thing. That's how we're qualified for every promise. And as I travel to different churches to preach here, uh, not on the mission field, but just mm -hmm. here, I'm amazed at how many people feel unworthy of his promise. Mm. Uh, a lot of times I'll give an altar call, not just mm -hmm. for salvation, mm -hmm. but to lay hands on the yes. sick or to uh, pray yeah. for different situations. And I hear people say, I don't feel I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing is I'm not good enough. Amen. But if I'm yeah. dead with him, he's good enough. Amen. And that Amen. takes all the pressure off me. Amen. You know, I was um, struck by um, your testimony about um, the opposition Yes. That we sometimes, not, not just abroad, but here at home too. Um, and we talk about sometimes the walls that we put up. That's right. Um, and, and we call these, uh, we, you know, we kind of chuckled a little bit um, as we were preparing for the shows that, you know, maybe when we get to heaven that God will just look at us and just kind of do this little head shake thing, you know, because we've just gotten hung up on so many of the traditions of the law, yes. um, the denominations in the law, instead of just seeking the Word That's right. and the promise of the Word and, and how we're all covered in one blood. It's the same blood and it that is. covers and resurrected us. Absolutely. Jesus gave us a specific warning. He said, there is one thing that can kill the Word of God. In Mark chapter 7, it's the tradition of men. Mm. And in mm -hmm. fact, in one of the versions I was reading, uh, not the King James, I believe it was the American Standard Version, he even said, you have become experts <laughs> in obeying tradition of men, but laying aside the Word of God. Yeah. And I got to thinking about that this morning. He looked at the Pharisees and said, you're an expert at laying aside the Word of mm -hmm. God and uh, replacing with tradition. And I will tell you, I just preached a message uh, a couple Sundays ago called religion, not, or excuse me, relationship, not religion. Mm -hmm. And too many times we have thought of a walk with God as a mere religion. Mm -hmm. I don't mind saying that I'm the most anti-religious guy out there. Mm -hmm. I can't stand religion, but I love relationship. Amen. And Amen. that's where it's at. Amen. God didn't call us to religion. Mm -hmm. He did not call us to religion. He called us to relationship. Mm -hmm. He did talk in James about pure and undefiled religion yes. is, you know, visiting the widows and supporting mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. ones in need. Mm -hmm. But he is calling us to relationship. And, and what, that's the key. What was offensive to him? You know, when and the traditions of men, uh, you know, what did Jesus do when he went into the temple? That's right. He said, my house, this is a house of prayer. House of prayer. And it's not going to be defiled. That's right. And so we need to, as you say, there are, there are there's knowledge in this word that we need to um, help mold. 
yes. you know, our lives because Jesus said, I've come to give you the example. That's right. And so if we're looking for how to live uh, daily with Christ, it's in his, the way he spoke and the way That's he right. lived and the way he loved, which crossed all of those boundaries. Now, Kevin, I, I want to jump back. I know we're sure. just kind of going yeah. back and forth a little bit, but I want to jump back to a story that you shared about an experience that you had when you quote, quote, went off grid a little bit and, and Haiti and you took a trip up into the mountains yes, with an interpreter. I sure did. Tell us about that opposition. We decided uh, this trip, it was uh, Ted Lung and I and my pastor from Tabernacle of Praise, Pastor Michael Neff, he went with us, so the three of us, we decided to split up, take an interpreter interpreter with us and go to different locations and take the gospel to them. And um, the local pastor that hosted us said, I have two churches up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And I felt that tugging. And I know the voice of the Lord. And I knew that I was the one to go up in those mountains. So I volunteered. And what I didn't know was up in those mountains are some of the um, most heavily concentrated areas of voodoo and mm -hmm. witchcraft and witch doctors, strongholds we would call mm -hmm. them, uh, very much strongholds. And I was able to speak at two different locations, and one I learned later, the property I was on was owned by a local witch doctor, wow. and I didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, God brought us through, and we saw some amazing things up there, and I just received an email the other day from the local pastor, um, and he told me the little town was a town called uh, Ravenpock, and he said, the people of Ravenpock are wanting to know when you're coming back, because the mm -hmm. message is what uh, got their attention. Wow. And that's the key. This thing isn't about me. It's not about a human. It's about impacting humans. And it's about the message. And that's Amen. the only thing that can impact Amen. humans. And, and that's what really touched me when you said this is the message. Absolutely. Amen. So today, I'm so grateful that you came to share this message. Sure. And the, and the, the doors that are going to continue to open for you for, to, for you to do that. Sure. And so you have a, a new website that I got to see Word Change Ministries. Correct. And tell us how folks can get involved with your ministry and help you or support in however God chooses to do um, and, and, and to get involved with where God's connecting you and taking you. Sure. They can log on to our website, uh, wordchangeministries.com, mm -hmm. and uh, we have all of our contact information on there. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I'm available for guest speaking at different mm -hmm. locations upon invitation. So uh, if any location or church is interested, just shoot me an email or call. And uh, we, we pr there's pretty much nowhere we won't go. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I heard in your voice, um, that, you know, there's just nowhere you wouldn't go. Right. Nothing you wouldn't do to share the love of God as he's called you to do. That's right. And you know, Kevin, um, we're kind of getting toward the sure. end of our program. Time always goes so fast. It does. But I am sure in, in your full-time employment in law enforcement and full-time employment in the ministry sure. of the gospel that you see people in some pretty dark places struggling, hurting, seeking for things, desperate, yeah. and not sure what they're desperate for. They're just out there searching. So if you don't mind, would you take a moment to speak to that person today who's watching this program, who might find themselves in that dark place, in that lonely place, desperately seeking something. Tell them what it is they're seeking. What they're seeking is found in Isaiah 53. And this is a hallmark of what I preach on. Isaiah 53 verse 1, the Lord starts out and he says, who has believed the report? And a lot of people don't believe that report about the death, burial, and resurrection, and that's why they're in the position that they're in. And it goes on to say in verse 3, he's despised and rejected of men. So think about that. He took our rejection. If we're feeling rejected or downcast, he took that. Why should we carry that? He's a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. And I love verses 4 and 5. This is so important. Surely he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And in the original Hebrew, that can be rendered sicknesses and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. and so I believe in the divine um, covenant and gifts of healing. I believe in miraculous healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And it's by his stripes or his wounds that I can receive healing. That's what the broken and the downcast are looking for. They may not know it but it's all found in the death, burial, and resurrection of Him. And when Jesus came up out of that grave, He left our sin there. 
Mm. We understand that. But he also did more. He left our sickness there. He left our poverty and lack there. He left our depression there. He left our broken marriage there. Anything that the enemy would ever try to do to us to destroy us, we have to understand that Jesus left it in that grave when he came up. See, Romans 10, and many know this verse, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and we put a lot of emphasis on confession, Mm -hmm. which is true, but we stop reading there. We need to really read the next part of this verse and believe out of our heart. Yes, sir that he was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. saved. Mm-hmm. And the, the original Greek word for saved means more than just not going to hell, you're going to heaven. Mm-hmm. It literally means made whole, prospered, blessed, protected, the whole gamut. In Hebrew, we could call it shalom, mm-hmm. the whole mm-hmm. blessing of God. Mm-hmm. So if we believe out of our heart that Jesus did what Isaiah 53 said, and he came up out of the grave, then we can have his total uh, blessing and peace. That's what the world is looking for right there. Amen. So how do they approach Jesus to get this? Very simply, I'm not, I'm not one big, no disrespect to those mm-hmm. that uh, believe this, but I'm not big on saying repeat a prayer after mm-hmm. me. There's nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. just not what God's laid on my heart. What I encourage people to do is in their own way, not in my words, but in their own way, out of their own heart, just open up. It could be a prayer as simple as, Lord, I don't know how to pray. I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, I want you. Amen. And I call on the name of Jesus. And just begin getting real with God, Mm -hmm. telling him what's going on in your life, telling him where you need him. And that's the whole key. Just be real with God. He's looking for the heart. You know, in 1 Samuel, I love what the Bible says when David was being chosen. God tells the prophet Samuel, man's looking on the outside, but I'm looking at the heart. And God can see a heart. It doesn't matter if if a prayer sounds churchy or religious. God knows the heart behind the prayer. And I encourage the viewers just to know God. Open the heart. Open your heart to Him. Believe out of your heart what the scripture says that he was resurrected for you and then every promise in him in his death burial and resurrection is ours it's yes and it's amen Amen. and it's a sure thing amen well our time is almost up and you know I cannot I know that God has more of a story yes uh, through the word change ministry Excuse me. So we are looking forward to having a return and hearing more about what God is going to do with you. That'd be great. But today for you, if you have heard this message and if you have just called out to God and asked him to just meet you where you are and just given him your life, poured out your life, then Kevin and I just want to say welcome to the family of God. Absolutely. Because he, like Kevin said, is just looking for a heart that just wants to be loved and restored and that happens in the blood and through the blood yes, of Jesus does. Christ. So today as we get ready to close, welcome to the family of God. We encourage you to get into a Bible believing and preaching church and, and, and like Kevin said, start to study the Word of God because it is life and promise for you. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. And I just want to encourage you that God wants to use you right where you're at. So get on out there and connect someone to God's love today. God bless. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301. Jennifer Hill, the host of Broken to Blessed. This show deals primarily with abuse and the effects of abuse, the repercussions of abuse, and I talk to you about how to be free of the life of abuse and how to live an abundant and blessed life in God. So I invite you to join me at the times listed on your screen each week to learn how you can go from broken to blessed. Have a good day. Thanks. 